Okay, I have a prediction card right here. And um, before we look at it, I just want to put it right here. You want to stand it up a little. And, okay, right here. All right. Okay, as you can see over here, I have um, uh, deco playing cards. They're all mixed up. And all I'm going to do is just uh, refold the deco playing cards. Okay, very quickly. And you can look at any card except the bottom one. Okay, so here it is. Do you see one? If not, then watch the video again in higher quality. So, which one was your card? If you said uh, six of diamonds, then that was my prediction. Okay, so as you can see in this effect, I have a translucent card, which uh, you can see the nine of spades from this, uh, from the back, but in the front you can see the six of diamonds, but you don't see the six of diamonds because the back is red and the front is red, okay? Uh, in the front you can see the other card in between. It is quite simple to make one of these. I actually have um, other ones. I made... Uh, the three of them uh, well in this case the ice of space in the middle you know i, I you know i tried the ice of space because i really thought it was more visual or more easy to see the problem is the ice of space it has letters and there is no inverse letters when they can read our words any words you don't see that pretty clear because it's not a um, it's not the same thing as watching this in person but if you have a really stronger uh, light source from the back, you can even see the letters. And you know, the three of diamonds, it camouflage really well against the, the back, red color as well. The problem with the B, the, for some reason, you know, these cards, let me see. You can see the six of hearts, which is the, the front one, and inside is the five of spades. Uh, there is no really a good uh, red color matching uh, from the six of hearts to the back, from the face to the back. And I don't recommend to make this gimmick card using uh, B ones, okay? This is way easier to see uh, the face and the middle card. And the best results when I was trying to make this you know, uh, even if this is red and the bag is red and if it's the same reddish color, it's still uh, with a really close up, you still can see maybe the six right here. Okay. And which this is the main issue. It doesn't matter you can see the nine over here because in this effect, you really want to use two different cards as much as possible in color and number. So probably the six of diamonds, uh, as you can see, it conceals better between the, the shape of the spades, the nine of spades. And it's gonna help better to camouflage through this uh, red back source because of the numbers and the location of the shapes. Which in this case, for example, the three of diamonds, you still can see the diamond shape somehow in person much better uh, through because there is nothing uh, covering or camouflage in the excessive uh, view and uh, so uh, my recommendation is um, try to use something that is busy enough inside but it's easy to visualize it's not good to use a picture card because you want to keep an easy visualization in the card for the one is inside and for the one is outside now the way to make these ones is by using the three pieces of paper make sure it's paper because the, the playing cards it has paper in the front and paper in the back and in the middle it uses cardboard and the problem with the cardboard is really thick so you want to use something that is really translucent and something really thin okay so over here I only use the papers and you have to be really careful when working with papers 
because you, you don't want to create a lot of uh, wrinkles and you want to keep it even. Now to peel off the paper of any playing card, I already have another video which um, go to this video footnote and you find it in the first link. Okay, in the link number two, I'm gonna uh, show you again the force that I use in this video performance. In case you, I mean, you can use any other uh, force if you want. You don't have to use the same force. But in case you are wondering the force that I use, go to the link number two. And as you can see also in the performance, I put the card uh, covering this pip in the corner of this box. And I try to keep a nice decent distance from the lamp to the playing card. And, and you know the way to prepare this is because I actually use the three pieces of paper. Now always the red color goes outside, the dark one in the middle. But make sure you restore the shape, okay, really careful, you don't want to create any wrinkles on the card. Uh, one time from each side, and that's going to be enough. For the six of diamonds and the nine of spades. And I glue them together. And the way I actually glue these together is by using a stick glue. The stick glue, um, it helped me to keep them uh, nice and dry so they don't get wet. I try to put the two faces together, back to back. This is the way I create them and restore the shape. But again, uh, go to this video full note to see how um, peel off the paper. And in this case, I was able to get off the paper from a thin piece of cardboard in the middle from a single card. Now when you apply the stick glue in the card, make sure you go uh, in one direction, half of it and then the other half. Again, one single direction. And since it is really thin and it's just the paper, it's gonna fold itself, but it doesn't really matter. And repeat the same process for the three pieces of paper, which is the two faces and the back. Now, as you can see over here, I'm trying to align the corners first. Now, once you already align one side of the card, you can go ahead and stick everything together. Now, in the paper, which is the back of the playing card, it goes right over the nine of spades in this case. Align it uh, very carefully. And as you can see so far, um, since it is just paper, there is no cardboard support in the middle. So there is a few wrinkles. So as you can see, uh, it is not a big deal yet because we still can restore the wrinkles. And the way to do this, there are several ways you can do it. As I explained also in the video tutorial on the gimmick cards. But in my case, what I do is I put it in the middle of the deck of playing cards. And since I already have this um, tool to keep the cards straight, I'm going to take advantage and I'm going to use it uh, to apply a decent pressure on the deck of playing cards. And you can leave it like that uh, for overnight or at least two hours. Okay. After two hours, the card is completely straight. There is no wrinkles. And it's actually quite firm. It is not that loose as it was. You don't apply a lot of excessive pressure so you don't damage the tube. Right here you can see both sides. And you can see here uh, how the card is translucent and you only see the, the dark one in the middle. And it's better not to light up this corner, which is the six of diamonds. From this perspective, it's better to concentrate the light more towards this corner over here. Okay, and as you can see in the performance as well, I was struggling a little bit, you know, to fix this card, just to fix it. And it helped me as an excuse to, uh, so my fingers go through the light and they can see it is actually um, a legit card, you know, so it's not a, they don't think it is a fake one. And you know, there are actually so many endless stuff you can do with this uh, principle. It's not just limited to one single 
uh, performance. You can do so many things to this. You can pretend that uh, six of diamonds you have over here, it vanishes and then it becomes the nine of spades and that becomes the six of diamonds any you know transportation so many things you can do with this principle